place and go public school as a part of our leadership initiative, it is my honor to introduce you to Dr. Andrew Campbell, a lot of people may know him as Dr. ABC from the University of Toronto, who scored the Pretty Series. I hope we all look forward to hearing Dr. ABC speak about being a champion for equity, inclusion, and diversity, giving us ways to make all of our community members feel supported and thrive in a culture of care, understanding. I know I am. I am excited to have you here with us tonight for learning, challenging conversation, and acceptance. I hope you have a great day, and thank you, Dr. ABC. Thank you. Fantastic. And now, without further ado, Dr. ABC. Thank you so much. And thanks for that wonderful introduction, Tyler. And it's funny because this evening we are talking about being a champion for equity, diversity and inclusion. And this is a second part in your three part series. And I'm really happy to be uh, to be the one asked to do the second leg of this time well spent. And I love the concept of the theme, time well spent, looking at the learning journey series. And I know someone did part one already, and I'm here with part two to engage with you talking about being a champion for equity, diversity, and inclusion. So I want to say thank you, student Tyson, for um, introducing me. And I heard um, from the principal, some of the amazing work that you have been doing in the in in the field of equity, diversity, and inclusion, and that is what it's all about. Um, you have permission tonight, everyone, to take pictures of any of my slides, take picture of myself, use it for social media purposes. Absolutely, that is fine with me. So you do have that permission to do that. So why do we call this series, and why is it that I have my my presentation is called becoming a champion? for equity, diversity, and inclusion. I know when we see the word champion, we kind of get, you know, a little bit almost intimidated by the concept of a champion. Who is a champion, therefore, as we think about becoming a champion? I know it feels like a great responsibility. And so you are, we are kind of almost shy to think of, to think of ourselves as champions. But I want us to, to not be shy about that. I want us to be to think of ourselves as indeed champions for equity, diversity, and inclusion. And the idea that all of us, and I want to make sure I lay this, this very strong as we start, all of us in this space have the ability to be champions for equity, diversity, and inclusion. When we think about these, these concepts and we see it's happening all over the media and the world, you feel like it's, a, it's, 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 it's bigger than you. But it's not because equity, diverse and inclusion begins in your home. It begins among your friends, the conversations you have with your with your parents, what conversations you have about people and about other people. You watch you're watching movies as I'm talking to the community tonight. You're watching movies. How do you have conversations when you see issues of race in those movies, issues of of gender? sexuality, sexual orientation, LGBTQ issues, when you see issues with indigenous bodies and indigenous people, how do you engage in those conversations? That's where the championship starts. That's where the idea, the concept of being a champion, that's where we begin with that. And we need champions. The truth is that we all need champions. My dictionary definition I'm using this evening for this presentation is a person who fights or argues for a cause or on behalf of someone else. I want to repeat that. The dictionary you, um, definition I'm using is a person who fights or argues for a cause or on behalf of someone else. And that is why we talk, that's why we're talking about champions. You can be champions in your classrooms, in your schools, in your community, on the playground, on the basketball court. We are asking all of us as students, as parents, as community for us to take that individual responsibility for championship, for being champions. You know, there's a lot going on in our other school board and your school board, Simcoe County, is no less. So you're doing quite a bit of work. I think I've had two conversations with your leaders already in, in different setting. And so I know that the work is being done, but all of us have to do the work. You, you know what? We can't disrupt racism. We can't dismantle anti-black racism. 
We can't come against homophobia and Islamophobia. We cannot come against all those isms and any inequities in our school with a document. A piece of paper, a document, a new equity plan is not the answer alone or not the sole answer. We have seen them. You'll be surprised. The Stephen Lewis report talks about action items. That's years ago. And some of those action items have not even been examined. No action has happened. And so I want you to realize that in this work of equity, diversity, and inclusion, it begins with you. So I want you to say that to yourself. I want you to type that in the chat box for me. I actually want everybody to type that in the chat. Equity begins with me. I want, you to, I want to see you type that in the chat, everyone. We are engaging as a group. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me see the first person who did that. And thank you so much for that. I see it going so fast. But thank you for starting us off. And that is Colleen, Colleen Crankner. Thank you for starting us, Colleen. Equity begins with me. I want us to have, and that's the kind of posture I want us to have. And there are many words we can use in place of a champion. We can use words such as an advocate, a proponent, a promoter, a proposer, a supporter. I love that word. A standard bearer torch bearer, defender, protector, upholder. I love this one. A backer, a sponsor, a prime mover, a pleader for. I didn't even know there was such a word or such a phrase. A pleader for. You are pleading on behalf of someone else. I have to go there. A couple, a couple hours ago, maybe, maybe less than two hours ago, if you're watching, if you're on social media or you're watching TV, you would have known that the verdict in the George Floyd um, murder, the, ver the verdict came down and the police was found guilty on all three counts. But more than that, we, we get to realize during, the, during the, the process that the video that we have used as as number one evidence that was, that that cell phone was held by someone who said i am going to stand here and video what's going on so the world could see today i had a workshop with principals in the Peel region. And we showed them the Starbucks video also about the racism in the Starbucks. And we heard the voice of a woman in the background saying, I saw everything. Powerful. Powerful. If you look at the video in the Starbucks incident, there's a woman, her voice is, is, is very prominent when everything was happening. And she said, I saw everything. How many of us are willing to stand up, be that advocate, that proponent, that promoter, that proposer, that supporter, that uphold and protect and said, I saw everything. If you are going to be champions, a lot of us, we love, we love titles. Ally, I'm an ally, I'm an ally, I'm an ally. But what have you done? Have you done the work of an ally? You know, we're in a hurry. I was at a, I, I must share this. I was at a, an event um, a month, a, maybe more than a month ago. And I used the word ally. Allyship. And the speaker after me came on and people asked a question about allyship. And he insisted that he doesn't want us to use the word allyship. We, we want us to use the word accomplice and co-conspirator. Now, let me make this very clear. I like those words, and I think those words are indeed the right words, accomplice and co-conspirator. But we have a bad habit of rushing to labels and rushing to titles without doing the work. How would you like to know that there's somebody in your building who has the title as principal, but is not doing absolute, but is doing absolutely nothing? How would you like to go to a restaurant to have a meal and realize that there's someone with the title chef, but that person is outside sitting in the back? So my encouragement to you is don't be so rushed for titles. I want you to be rushed 
for the work, for the action. I want you to be authentic about your contribution, authentic about your work. Thank you, Anderson, Jennifer Anderson, for sharing that. Absolutely sharing that in the chat. And remember, the chat is open for all of us. Thank you, Alison Bradshaw, reminding us. And that camera was being held by a 17-year-old girl. What will you do with your power and your privilege in the work of advocacy? And we have this bad habit of thinking an advocate, a champion, is someone who is gotten, got up every, gets up every morning, is well-suited, ready to go, to face the world, to do the work of an ad advocate. All of us can be advocates. All of us can be champions. The work is there for all of us to do. So when we talk about equity, what do we mean? We talk about a condition or state of fair, inclusive, and respectful treatment of all people. Look around your school. Are you seeing equity on every level? Are we seeing fair, inclusive, respectful treatment for all our students? And if your answer is no, then we have, we have work to do. If our answer is no, we have work to do. When you think of diversity, we talk about the conscious acceptance, belief, recognition, and thought that differences exist. How do we deal with differences? How do we see people who are different from us? How do we receive those differences? Years ago, you heard, we used to use a word, very popular word years ago. And that is showing you how we have to keep growing and learning. Years ago, a very popular word was tolerance. People usually teach tolerance. I hope you realize there's no, there's hardly anyone teaching tolerance today. Because we realize after we learn enough tolerance, we realize something was missing. And people were realizing, well, I am doing tolerance workshop. I am involved in being more tolerable. But then what is missing? We realize that people don't want to be tolerated. People want to be respected, accepted, belong, recognized, appreciated, and even celebrated. Think about your school. Are the people who are different, who identify as different, all the persons who identify as different in your spaces, are those people appreciated? Are those people celebrated? Are we doing the job, the work that we need to do when it comes to diversity? And then the final word in our, in, our, in our definition section here is inclusion. The conscious, the first word I want you to, to take a note of, the conscious behavior and action. Don't leave that one out. The conscious behavior and action to recognize and accept persons, places, or things. I want you to look at those two words, the conscious behavior and action. When you think of inclusion, it's more than your tweet. A lot of us, a lot of us over the last year trying to come against racism and anti-black racism and anti-Asian and uh, anti-indigenous and homophobia and all the kind of stuff we are trying to fight within our system. A lot of us, we have done it and we said, oh, I'm reflecting. I have done a lot of workshops and I have had a lot of people reflecting and nothing is wrong with reflecting. I must tell you, I teach a course called reflective practice. So I believe in the power of reflection, but I can tell you this, I guarantee you in every single reflective practice course at the end of that process, we ask people, now that you have engaged in reflective, reflection, now that you have been reflective and reflexive, what will you do? So the, the fact that you're engaging in being reflective and reflexive, we now want to see the action that follows your reflection. So for those of us who are stuck at reflection, I want to say to you, I need you to hurry and move on. I'm going to repeat that. For those of us who are stuck at being reflective, I want you to hurry and move on to the next level of that process. Why do we need champions? So why do we need champions? We need champions because there's a fear of having courageous conversations. Many people, conversation like this make you uncomfortable. And I just want to say this quickly because when you go into these workshops, 
you keep on hearing presenters and facilitators and whoever's in charge, like myself, who is doing the doing the delivery. We keep on hearing this this concept of telling people if you are uncomfortable, then you are allowed to step aside or walk outside or disengage. I'm going to be very, very strong about this and to say to you, I want no one to disengage, no one to step aside, no one to walk away. I want, as a matter of fact, I want you to pull up your chair even closer to your phone or to your laptop. When we are engaging in these courageous conversations, we need you to be involved. We need you to, to be engaged in the process. Why do we need champions? We need champions because of that. We need champions because we need people to engage in courageous conversations. We need champions because many of our schools and our communities are filled with box checking phenomena. Let me do this. Oh, I went to a workshop today. It was about anti-black racism. Well, now I'm not no longer racist. No, there is, there is no certificate you get after a 60 minutes or a two hour conversation about racism or anti-homophobia, anti-Islamophobia, or any kind of inequities, ESL, disabilities, discrimination of all sorts, learning disabilities. There is absolutely no certificate you get to walk away saying, well, I know it all. But a lot of us, we do that. We check a box because we want the world to know we have that skill. We see problems with symbolism. We see the performance of inclusion. That's quite a bit happening. The performance of inclusion. We see the mindset of deficit thinking. Oh, when you are different, you are less valuable. You are less than. We see the operationalization of implicit bias. What do you mean by that, Dr. ABC? The upper, upper and upper rationalization of implicit bias. We all have biases, all of us, every single one of us. There are how many persons in the room? There are 104 of us in this room, 104 of us, and all of us, including myself, we have biases. Some of us, we have way less than others because we have been intentional about unpacking those biases because we understand when we hold certain biases, we realize that they, they come out in what we do. They come out in our work. And so that is why we, we are so strong about your implicit and your explicit biases because they show up in how you engage with each other. The lack of access, the gatekeeping, the doorkeepers among us. Those of us who believe like multiculturalism is the way to go. People need to abandon their own identities because you are Canadian. You need to be Canadian eyes and forget who you are. You can be Canadian and anything. I am Jamaican and I am Canadian. 100% Jamaican and 100% Canadian. It's we I can be I am also male. I am also I am also a teacher. I am also a professor. I am also Christian. I am also gay. There are so many layers and levels to who we are. Have you called out the inequities in your school? Have you looked at the lack of representation? Are you still stuck with the us and them mentality? Is there any action on your part? We have to understand if we are going to be champions. We, these, are, these are the reasons why we need champions. These are the reasons. So I love this, I love this diagram. I love this picture on, us, on, our, on our board. And it talks about equality, equity, and reality. Look on this as a metaphor. And ask yourself, who are the students in my school that are unable to see the game? And I want you to jump in the chat box, everyone. Jump in the chat box right now. And I want you to type for me. We are going to engage as a group. We're going to engage with each other. Type for me. Who are those categories of people or students or persons within our community that are unable to see the game. Go ahead and share. Who is unable to see the game? We're talking about equity, diversity, and inclusion. Who is unable to see the game? 
Go ahead and share for me, everybody. The, the It's a metaphor. Poverty, per, person with barriers of poverty. Thank you. Who is unable to see students with mental health issues? Thank you, Elisa Lima, for taking the with, with mental health diagnosis. The disabilities, English, ELL. Thank you for that. Learning dis differences. Our black students and racialized students, stu children living in poverty, our newcomers. Our ELL, racialized students, students with mental health. I'm seeing a lot of mental health issues. Students who identify from different diverse religions, indigenous students, students who identify as refugees. Thank you for being honest. Those with anxiety. Oh, we're getting there. Thank you. Gender issues. LGBTQ plus language barriers. You have to wreck, and why, why this is so important that I ask you to share and type as a community. Thank you so much, community, by the way. I want to say big hats off to all your participation. Single parent, anxiety disorder, physical disabilities. But I want to ask a question. I, somebody did something very beautiful. You type the word anxiety disorder, and you type the word single parent. Why would single parent... An anxiety disorder, among all the other things, be an issue of equity in our school. And I'm going to explain that to you. Because we, with the power and the privilege, we decide on who is valued, who is included, who gains access. I want you to understand that there are individuals among us who are responsible for access or exclusion. And so that is why when I speak to a group, I don't speak to policies. I speak to individuals who create policies. I want to repeat that. I don't speak to policies and paper. I speak to individuals who are responsible for the policies and the papers and the structures and the processes. Thank you so much. What are those barriers? So now we have talked about who is unable to see the game. What are those fences? The fences. Type for me. Let's talk about that for a minute. What are those fences? Thank you. Thank you for starting us off. Language. Money. Thank you. Supports. Come on now. Education in itself. Thank you. Is a fence. Our biases, our, our nutrition, our capacity, the system. And someone is bold and brave and honest. And the person said, teachers. We have to examine ourselves. I don't want the few teachers who are with us this afternoon to be offended and be affected by the truth. There are teachers among us who are the fences, who because of their lack of cultural competence, because their lack of culturally relevant and responsive pedagogy, because their lack, thank you, Nicole P., of empathy come on now because of their lack of compassion and love they do not see all our students no action no action is not an action silence is not an action you fall in your arms as an educator, a person who is powerful, is not an action. We want you to speak up. We talk about champion early in our paperwork and we define champion. We call on words as advocates and proponents and flag bears and defenders and protectors. We need you. Stephanie R. talks about our own blind spots, generational biases, ageism is a part of it. Ageism is a part of that. The complacency. The hidden rules. Thank you so much for sharing. Now let's close out this section with the last one. And I want you to make sure you go back in the chat afterwards and see the list. Because I have this, I, I get very offended. I must tell you this. I get very offended when I go into workshops and I talk about awareness to action and there are individuals sit in the workshop and pretend as if they are unaware of racism in Canada. 
They are unaware of anti-black racism. They are unaware of issues with our police and the black community. They are unaware of how many of our black students have been disenfranchised and marginalized and excluded and pushed to the side. They are unaware how many of our refugees and our newcomers are treated. They are unaware and they are disingenuous because you are not unaware. What you have done is refuse to acknowledge the truth. And let me just say this right now. If you do not acknowledge the truth, you can't fix it. I like to see when persons come to a, a room and they are ready to work, to disrupt and to fix. But they are the same persons who refuse to acknowledge the barriers. You can't fix what is not broken. So you are being dishonest. You cannot fix what is not broken. You are being dishonest. We want you to acknowledge that these things are broken. They are fences in our schools and we are going to pull them down. The last one I want to ask you, what are those, what are those boxes? What are those boxes you think we can use in our school? When you think about equity, diversity, and inclusion, and we want to make sure some of our, our, many, all our students get to achieve, what are those boxes, the supports? What are those supports? Go ahead and share for me quickly. What are those boxes? Time and space. Thank you, Mary, for starting us. Listening. Ooh, so many persons talking about listening. Technology, asking questions, learning. Wow, caring, compassion. The number of times persons have shared caring and compassion, you would think I force you to use those words. Those are my words. Those are my words. Caring, compassion, listening, love empathy we like to we don't understand that supports are built on these things volunteerism empathy believing our students when they said i do not feel that i belong here my teacher you have to learn how to believe our students standing up speaking out be i love this jennifer saying hello nice to see you our greetings building relationships thank you so much for that Thank you so much for that, everyone. Excellent job. As we move on, we want you to realize why we need champions. Because one size does not fit all. One size does not fit all. And we want you to realize from this picture is that we have to learn that all of our students do not have the same access and privilege. And as a school, as a community, our job is to create those access and privilege after you have identified come on now you have identified the barriers you are now identify those fences you have to work at creating the access because you have to be honest about that and i have on my notes i want to share with you i have on my notes those three powerful words kindness compassion and empathy we need to teach our children, not school I'm talking now. I'm talking to you parents listening to me. I'm talking to the parents listening to me. I want to stop it so I can look at you some more parents. I want to look at you a little bit deeper. Let me put our, our speaker view on. Put your speaker view on so you can see my face. I want to speak to parents directly that your job is to teach that empathy from home. I am calling on parents to have those empathy conversations at home have those compassionate conversations at home uncle and grammy and auntie and, and big brother all of us who are caregivers and relatives whoever you live with because many of us we all don't live with our parents so i want to i want to say welcome and bring into the space all the grandma and grandpa and nana and grammy I want to welcome you into the space, uncle and auntie and cousin and big brother and big sister and good neighbor, that your job is to do that for our students. We need champions because a lot of us, when we come into this place, there's no genuine interest in the work of disrupting anti-black racism. And what happens when there are no interests, we see a performance of inclusion. Ask yourself a very important question for me. Don't answer it. Just ask yourself. Are we being authentic at our school? There are many schools rep um, represented here this, after, this evening. Are we being authentic? 
or we put it on a show. Our Black History Month celebration was it to celebrate our black students and all students in our school. Black History Month is not for the black students only. It's really an, it's, it's for the black students, but it's also that everybody gets to celebrate. And that's how you grow in respect and knowledge and appreciation for each other's culture. But what we see happening is that people come to these workshops, they come to these talks, they come to these spaces, they come to these events, and they walk away unchallenged, unchanged, and unbothered. As the children say, they are unbothered. I want you to walk away from here this afternoon, this evening. I want you to walk away challenged. I want you to walk away with some form of change. And I want you to walk away being bothered. Absolutely. My job here is not to make you relax and be comfortable. My job is to disturb you and to disrupt you a bit. There's a song by the great Bob Marley. Bob Marley, have a, uh, our, the great Bob Marley, he had a song and one of the lines says, I want to disturb my neighbor. That's my job, to disturb you. Because many of us, we are, com we are so comfortable in our spaces. We forget our job is to challenge those acts of inequities in our school. So as we go into the next section, we want to focus on five things. Five things we want to focus on. Understanding self. Understanding others. Inclusive school culture and climate that includes your community as well. The growth process, because remember, we're not going to walk out of here learning everything one evening. It's impossible. This is a, this is a, this is a basic conversation we're having. L learning and unlearning and relearning is a process over time. And then I want you to think about yourself. Think about your individual role. Think about yourself. In this work, think about your individual role. So the first one is an awareness of self. I want us to think about that. 